are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Thursday. You know what that means. It's another crossover Thursday edition of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Giants. The first time this year, these two division opponents are meeting on a special Christmas afternoon matchup. I'm Gino Camilleri, host of the Locked On Eagles podcast, joined by Patricia Traina, host of the Locked On Giants podcast. And this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. They sponsor each and every crossover Thursday. If you don't know what Prize Picks is by now, it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash NFL. Use all lowercase code, and you will get a first deposit match up to $100. Patricia, it's the holiday season. Seems like the last time we talked was that playoff game a couple months ago. Way longer than that, but these teams have changed quite a bit since mm-hmm. then. For our Eagles fans that might not have been paying to attention to the Giants because we got to deal with Dallas and the rest of the NFC to hopefully get into the playoffs. What's going on in New York? I know for the culture, Tommy Cutlets has given us <laughs> Paisan something to look forward to, but it seems like the New York Giants are having some fun playing football the last couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, first off, you know, main storyline for the Giants has been injuries. Daniel Jones is down for the season with an ACL. Tyrod Taylor was out. Now he's back from IR. He had cracked ribs. So they have turned to Tommy Cutlets, Tommy DeVito, the undrafted free agent who was supposed to sit on the practice squad this past year, but who got pressed into action when Tyrod Taylor went down. So Cutlets came in and lo and behold, uh, you know, he got paced by Dallas who, you know, Dallas is a very good team. We did I think too. the Eagles got paced <laughs> yeah. by them once this season as well. And uh, then Cutlets led the Giants to three games in a row, three wins in a row, including one over the Green Bay Packers on Monday Night Football. The Giants never win in prime time. They just, or I should say rarely. So that was a big deal. Then, of course, you know, last week they go down to the House of Horrors, the original House of Horrors. And I say that because the link has been a House of Horrors as well for the for the Giants. And they lose. And, you know, all this, this talk about, oh, maybe the Giants can sneak into the playoffs it dies. Now, mathematically, the Giants still alive, but nobody is expecting them to run the table, not with two games against the Eagles, who I who are struggling right now, but are still, I think, uh, the, the better team. And then, of course, the game sandwiched in between with the Los Angeles Rams. So, you know, at this point for the Giants, you know, I hate to say this because I think it's kind of, I don't want to say loser talk, but it's It is in a way they're playing for pride. They're playing for their jobs next year. They're playing for, you know, the names on the back of the Jersey, the name on the front of the Jersey, you know, all all the typical stuff and inside the building, you know, they've been galvanized a little bit by Tommy DeVito and his play. But, you know, the bottom line is that the season has just gone so horribly wrong for the giants who had a lot of expectations. And in retrospect, you could argue that a lot of those expectations maybe weren't realistic. If you go back and you you really assess where the Giants were and how they got to where they did last year. So it's just play out to string, you know, hopefully get a win against the Eagles at the second house of horrors, the link, which has not been good to the Giants. I think they've won only three games dating back to, I want to say 2014 mm-hmm. playing on, on the Eagles hallowed ground there. So you hope if you're a Giant fan that it's at least competitive and if they can squeak out a, a win against what I call the Green Grinch, no offense, Eagles fans, but that's what they call them, uh, even better. I got to say, there are some guys on this team that were on that Giants team a couple of years ago when Doug Peterson pulled Jalen Hurts for what was Nate Sudfeld at the time. And a lot of people got upset at that. If you don't think that's in the back of a couple of their minds to play spoiler over these next two out of three games, for a very susceptible Eagles team that has been bruised and battered the last couple weeks, they are not the powerhouse that we saw going 10 and one in the beginning of the season, the last couple weeks. And the biggest story is when does the free fall end for the Philadelphia Eagles? And if you're saying after losing a game to San Fran, Dallas, 
and Seattle that now we have to come back to the East Coast and play a division rival in the New York Giants who have won respectively more games than they have lost under Tommy DeVito. This is a game where Throw out the record book. I know it's an old adage in the NFC East, but the Eagles have to come ready to play. And there's a lot of outside noise going on. There's players talking to the media. And last week, our defensive coordinator and Sean Desai was demoted in favor of Matt Patricia. So now Matt Patricia will have his first introductory press conference as a defensive coordinator this week. And you were 10 and four and you just locked up a playoff spot. And there's all this chaos And the thing is, when does the free fall end and when do the Eagles get back on track? Luckily, like you have said, Patricia, last year they were in a very similar scenario where they were not in a free fall. They kind of slipped on a couple rocks towards the end of the season when Gardner came in there and they had to go and play Jalen Hurts in that week 18 game so they could get the one seed. Well, the one seed's out the window. The Eagles are fighting for their lives to go 3-0 and to potentially get the two seed. Because if the Eagles have to go on the road the way that they have been playing on the road in the last couple of weeks, they're beating no one. So this game means so much to the Philadelphia Eagles. I know that everybody in New York hates Philly. Everybody in Philly hates New York. There's not as much bad blood right now as there is between us and the Cowboys. But I think this game is one that if the Eagles are looking to get to the playoffs, you have to handle your business In the division, the divisional games mean so much in terms of tiebreakers. I always say it's a it's a two for one. You're going to gain two positions over whoever you beat. And this is a Giants team that Tommy DeVito, he's got the world by storm right now. And Drew Locke beat this team. Could Tommy DeVito beat them one out of two times? Zach Wilson beat them. It's a reality right now, Patricia, as crazy as it sounds that a 10 and four team with a playoff spot secured can have this many question marks, but that's the reality. And I think these two teams have gone two completely different directions. I took a lot of crap for backing up the Giants in these NFC East crossovers back in the summer. The last time I'm going to do that. But I think there's a, a lot of fun things that we can look forward to for this Christmas game that might not mean a ton to Giants fans, and it might not mean a ton to Eagles fans if they slip up and all of a sudden you lock up the five seed and these next two games have nothing to play for. So it all comes down to who's going to play spoiler. Will the Giants be the Blue Grinch? Will the Eagles steal the Giants Christmas party? We'll get into some of the matchups to watch because this is one. It's been almost a year now. We're going to figure out what's going on in Giant land, what's going on in Eagles land, who's going to win those one-on-one matchups when we come back on the other side of this break. Today's episode of the Locked On Eagles podcast is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, and they also sponsor our friends over at the Locked On Giants podcast and the entire Locked On podcast network because it is the official sports book of every show that we have here, and it's the number one sports book in all of America. And if you're new to the show, welcome in. You are now an everydayer, and if you want to get in on the action over at FanDuel, you can put in a $5 money line wager on Christmas, while you're sitting around with family, you're having a good time, you put in five bucks on the Eagles or the Giants to win, whatever you put that money line wager on, if it wins, you're going to get $150 back in bonus bets. What a great Christmas present that is. You put in $5, they give you $150. All you have to do is go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to keep the NFL season rolling. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. You can play spreads, player props, over-unders. FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. All right, everyone, rolling on this holiday season with a crossover Thursday here with Locked On Eagles and Locked On Giants. I'm Gino Camilleri, host of LOE, Patricia Trainer of LOG. Let's get into the matchups, Patricia. It's been a while. I know these two teams have changed. What is your biggest concern from a, somebody who covers the Giants? Knowing that the Eagles, they have to get back on track. What is the one factor that you're looking at and saying, if the Giants can do X, they can beat Philadelphia? I think I'm going to sound like a broken record to the people who've listened to me regularly. I said this last week. I probably said it the week before. I'm going to say it again. The offensive line. The Giants' offensive line, particularly the interior, has not played well. It has not been consistent. Last week against the Saints, 
the offensive line proved yet again, here we are, we're in week 15 last week, and they still cannot pick up a basic stunt. How that happens, I have no idea. Is this I a really repeat don't. of past shows we've done in the past years, Patricia? It seems like the same issues over it and over the again same for this issue, team. issue, and it's something I've been screaming about on my show, not just about you know the quality of players, but I'm starting to really question the coaching because how does that happen? You're in week 15 and you still can't pick up a stunt? Come on now. So that being said, they are going up against a Philadelphia defensive front, which is very, very good. And if you're Matt Patricia and you're watching the tape last week, you're saying to yourself, hmm, can't pick up a stunt, huh? So maybe I'll throw a few stunts and twists and funky stuff at you and see how you do. That's what I would do if I were Matt Patricia. Because the Giants offensive line, you know, look, I know it sounds basic and it sounds too, you know, like the easy answer, but it really starts up front in the pit or in the trenches, whatever you want to call it. And the Giants... Right now, um, they are on an alarming pace to have the second most sacks, I believe, in NFL history behind the 1986 Eagles, who I think gave over, I want to say it was 104 or something like that. The Giants are on pace right now to have over 90 sacks. Now, not all the sacks are on the, the offensive line. Some of them are on the fact that the quarterback holds onto the ball too long. But when you throw stunts and twists and, and funky things at, at that offensive line, they're like, what do we do? You know, so that is to, to me the key, one of the key matches, if not the key matchup. And the Eagles front has taken a lot of heat as good as the national media thinks they are. Situationally, they are very poor. Where they dominated last year was on third down sacks where they were at the top of the league. This year, they are at the dead bottom. Teams are able to move the ball continually on the Philadelphia Eagles because there hasn't been a cohesion between the coverage and the defensive front. So you mentioned that offensive line, Seattle, Lou and I on our show, were thinking the same thing. Oh, that's an, that's an O-line this D-line can get after. This all, Eagles defensive line has had trouble closing down on the quarterback in the last couple weeks. It is a big concern because it allows teams to continue to make plays and take a 92 yard drive down with two minutes left with Drew Locke as your quarterback, and at the same time, how can the secondary stop anybody when your best, your best corner in James Bradbury, who you all know very well from your New York Giant days, he looks more like he does in his last years of his New York Giant uniform than he did in his all-pro season from 2022. So to me, it's how do you stop the Tommy DeVito mayhem and stop the magic with some of these playmakers that he has seen the last couple weeks. And that answer has to come through Matt Patricia dialing up a defense like he did last week to look at it in a positive light outside of that last drive, the Eagles where they were very bad getting off the field on third down under Sean Desai, Matt Patricia held Seattle to around 33% prior to that last drive. So that's one thing to look forward to. How does it come? Does it come through blitzes? He doesn't do as much as most teams do. The Eagles like to shy away from that. But now with Tommy DeVito, do they smell blood in the water in a game where they know that even though they got out to a fast start last time, they didn't get out to a quick enough start. So if they let a team like this slip, stick around and you kick field goals and all of a sudden Tommy DeVito leads his team to a touchdown drive and a weird turnover happens in an NFC East game, this can go awry in the blink of an eye because the defense can't stop anybody and the offense has averaged 14.3 points a game over the last three weeks. And we're sitting here in Philadelphia and saying, how are you going to keep up with the likes of San Francisco? How are you going to keep up with the likes of Dallas? The storyline is, can the Eagles against a Dallas defense that will present some problems in my opinion, you have to worry about Kayvon Thibodeau. You're going to have to worry about Jalen Hurts who hasn't looked great turning the ball over. But can you get this offense right against a team that is, let's just call a spade a spade, is a little bit inferior to the opponents that you have played up until now over the last month or so. But that doesn't mean anything to Philadelphia because you're dead last in a lot of categories on offense the last couple of weeks. You're dead last in a lot of categories on defense. When does the free fall end and do these guys that win their man-on-man -man matchups, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, do they get back to that? These are matchups that they have to win, Patricia, and if they don't, 
hats off to the Giants for playing spoiler, but I think it says a lot about the personnel if they can't get it done over these last couple weeks. And you say guys are playing for their job in New York. There's going to be question marks if these last three games, two of which are against division opponents, you don't look good. I always say draft to beat your division. You build a team to beat your division because you play them six times a year. Well, if you're not looking good and the Giants are able to hit home on some defensive line rushes and Kayvon Thibodeau has a couple more sacks, go Ducks. That's why I keep mentioning his name. But this could be an offseason that turns really tumultuous. But at the same time, it's Christmas. I want to be positive. I'm looking at one storyline, the quarterbacks. I think it's the easiest one right now. Jalen Hurts is under a lot of pressure in Philly, and Tommy DeVito is the sensation in New York. But when it comes down to who is better on the football field, I still have to trust Jalen Hurts getting this done. But if he turns it over like he did last week, here we are again. And I'm scared about that. Well, I want to ask – go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, you still have Boston Scott, right? The giant killer on your team? Oh, that's the other storyline we were going to have to bring up. You thought I was forgetting that one. I didn't want to be the one I'm who – I'm saying, when's he going to mention Boston Scott? He hasn't played a ton – but we have this guy for two games a year, and this is when it comes to fruition. Number 35, I hope he is the guy that comes down our chimney and he is our Santa Claus for the Philadelphia Eagles because th oh, this is what we have said back in the summer, that he's good for two games a year. He doesn't do much outside of that, but you have to hope. You have to hope. And in Philadelphia, a lot of things have gone awry in the wrong way. But what better than the Giants team who, like you said, Patricia, in Philadelphia, it's been tough for them. At home for the Eagles, they've been rather successful. They have to get back home, win some games after being away. I want to know one thing, though, Patricia. Tommy Cutlets. <laughs> Is this guy really as cool as he seems? He's very grounded. You know, okay. I mean, a lot, yeah. a lot of people think, you know, that, that he's this, you know, guy with a bunch of swagger. He's very down to earth. Um, you, I'm you a Syracuse guy. About, that was my yeah, first team, he, so he, I knew he, him. I mean, he's, he, he's he's uh, what my my Nona, you know, I ha, I'm an, of Italian heritage. Oh, yeah. So my Nona would call him a nice Italian boy. Oh, um, yeah. Very, That's what very he quiet. seems like. Yeah, very quiet, very respectful. I know, you know, he made, you know, headlines for the wrong reasons this week because of the pizzeria gate, you know, that got botched up. But he made good on that. And he's going to go back and do an appearance for free for charity, actually, to raise money for charity. But, you know, this is a kid. Uh, I call him a kid. I, I'm sorry. I call everybody a kid who's in their 20s. But this is a young man who wants to be good, who is taking this opportunity seriously, and who is not letting this whirlwind that has developed around him go to his head. And we have seen guys that, you know, they find success overnight. And it's like, you know, suddenly they go from being, you know, the guy that you could sit down and have a beer with to, I'm sorry, I don't know you. You know, a guy mm -hmm. won't even give you the, the, the time of day. DeVito's not like that. I mean, I could sit and have a conversation with him about how to make the ideal chicken cutlet. And I have had this conversation with him, actually. How do you make the ideal chicken cutlet? And why is vodka sauce better than marinara sauce on a oh, chicken now cutlet? We're talking. That's actually what we're having for dinner tonight. That's actually so funny that you said that. Cutlet sandwiches. But, yeah. no, I, I wanted to bring that point up because – it reminds me a lot of when Jalen Hurts was a rookie and he just had this infatuation to him that guys kind of just, they, he had this aura that kind of drew people to him, which started to say like, maybe he might be the guy over Carson Wentz. And there's a lot to prove on the football field for Tommy DeVito. But if he can bring that element, like you're saying, a grounded individual who doesn't get blinded by the New York, I, we know all the New York media is, you don't get blinded by those lights and people buy in you got to ride the wave for as long as you can at the, at the current point in time. And these last couple of weeks, like the Eagles did back in 2020, see what you can get out of them. And if he puts up a good show against Jalen hurts, which that would be more on Jalen hurts and the Eagles than anything. I think it would be a pretty cool story for our friends in New York, because I need you guys to get back to number two in this division. I'm so sick of the Dallas Cowboys as it you stands. And, both. and you know yeah. what, you know, you mentioned the division, Gino, we're just real quick. I'm, I neglected to mention in the last segment, the Giants are currently, I believe, two and two in the division. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they they're doing do, pretty you good. Know, you know, Giant fans say to me, well, you know, tank, play for the draft pick. The Giants, I think at this point, if they can get three and three, finish up three and three in the division, I'll take that considering they've struggled in the division play 
And, you know, look, it's a step forward. It's a tiny step. I, I get it. You know, there's no playoffs uh, coming our way, but you know what? You take the little steps and, you know, you come back next year and you hope that you can close the gap with the Cowboys. Cause like you, I am sick of the Cowboys dominating. I am sick of, you know, America's team. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm part of America. They're not my team. And uh, you know, so we have that in common. So if there's something to unite giant fans and Eagles fans who, as you said, don't like each other for the most part, although you and I like each other, I think, you know, so yeah, we're very, we're very cordial here. Yes. yes. We, we, we like each other here on the lockdown. We're, we're, we're like one big happy family, but if there's something that unites us, it's our dislike of the guys down South in Texas. Yeah. Jerry Jones said he got a kick out of watching the Eagles after his team got beat on Sunday pretty well, mm -hmm. but we're going to be in for some fun on Monday. I think it's going to be a, a nice, enjoyable game, hopefully for all of us to, to watch. Hopefully we can be a little bit calmer as Eagles fans and Giants fans. You could win this game and potentially with all these teams in the playoffs, still get a pretty good draft pick because in the AFC, you look at how many teams are eight, five and nine and six or whatever it is right now. And same in the NFC and the Eagles at the same time, we're still fighting for that number two seed, but the keys to how each team could pull off a victory. We will finish up the show with that. Folks, DoorDash, the second we were told that they were going to be a sponsor of this show, I think all of us were ecstatic. And why is that? Well, as you know, Patricia and I, we are Italians. We love our food. We were just talking cutlets. And everybody, you're probably saying, yeah, I got to get on that right now. While I'm on my phone, I might as well go and order some DoorDash. So download that app today. And if you put in the code LOCKED23, all first-time users are going to get a 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. I can't get good pizza out here in Colorado. I'm dying for some New York pizza. I would kill to get some pizza in New York City right now, even New Jersey. And I would just put in the DoorDash app, have it delivered right to my house. And you can do that as well. Go to DoorDash, use the code LOCKED. 23 L O C K E D 23. And once again, you're going to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. DoorDash, please don't ever go away. You're great friends to our everydayers, you're great friends to us here. And I'm hitting up DoorDash as soon as I get off here. Give me some nice Italian cutlets. As you know, Tommy Cutlets is on there as well. Go get yourself some DoorDash. All right, everyone, finishing up this crossover Thursday, this Christmas edition of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, each and every day. And if you don't get sick of seeing us five days a week, you can catch us even more on Locked On Sports Today's first 24-7 streaming channel, quite literally any time of day, any time zone. I was looking for the right word that you want to. You can check out Locked On Sports today. Both Patricia and I and all of the other national and local experts are on there covering every league, every show that we have. So make sure you tune in for your second listen each and every day. But for your first listens, it's LOE, LOG, keys to victory. Here we are. Patricia, how do the Giants walk out of Lincoln Financial Field, the House of Horrors, the division rival, how do they walk out of there with a win? Oh, gosh. Short of uh, locking the Eagles' locker room door and keeping them from coming out on the field? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, look, it, it starts in the trenches, as I mentioned in the previous segment. They've got to do a better job at protecting DeVito. Uh, they've got to give him a little bit more time. They've got to allow for the run game. Last week, Saquon Barkley whom the Giants have really been leaning on, there was really no room for him to run, and they got away from the run. So if that offensive line doesn't do its job, if it if, if it turns in another stinker of a performance as it did last week, it's going to be a long day for the Giants. I think on defense, the Giants have got to get after Jalen Hurts. Last week, again, I was stunned that they didn't go after uh, Derek Carr of the Saints a little bit more than they did. You know, Derek Carr is, is, is um, you know, he's a statue back there. So I figure, okay, he doesn't do well under pressure. Send the house at him. And they didn't. Now, Jalen Hurts, he has mobility. So he can burn you with his legs, obviously. So they got to make sure they play contain. Don't let him, you know, run wild. 
and get after him because no quarterback alive likes to be pressured. So I'm going to be looking for the defensive front to do its job to push that pocket. Now, I don't know if Dexter Lawrence is going to play. He didn't practice today, uh, today being Wednesday as we record this. He's dealing with a hamstring, but Dexter Lawrence is a big you know, load to handle. He can collapse the pocket and allow for, for you know lanes to open up for those other guys to exploit. But they need to get uh, in there, get some pressure, and above all, get some turnovers. They didn't have any turnovers last week. Turnovers were a staple in their three-game winning streak. If they can get a few of them and give the offense a shorter field, maybe, just maybe, the long national nightmare for the Giant fans will be over and they will come out victorious on Lincoln Financial Field. And I'm going to turn around and pivot off of some of those things that you said because the run game for the Giants and Saquon Barkley, how are the Eagles going to stop it? They have had a terrible time defending the run the last couple of weeks. They have been eviscerated. Seems like James Cook was that first guy that really exploited the middle of the field defense. And then the Niners did it. And then Dallas did it. And then Seattle did it. The Eagles have to get back to a way where they were, where they were top of the league when it comes to run defense earlier on in the season. It's going to be a difficult assignment. But this one comes down to, as you said, stopping the trenches. Well, the Eagles on the other side of the ball. Cam Jurgens, who is the right guard, who was out last week with a chest injury. He's still up in the air if he's going to play. Landon Dickerson at left guard, he has thumb surgery today, so he is going to miss that game. The Eagles could potentially be missing 40% of their offensive line. Can the Eagles do what they did last week in terms of running the football, maintaining the clock with a beat-up offensive line, but can they do it efficiently? The downfall of the Eagles has been settling for three points. They allowed Seattle to stay in that game instead of taking a 10 or a 14 nothing lead. They take a 10-0 lead because they kicked a field goal. If they would have scored those four points, it would have won them that game. The Eagles have to do a better job getting back to a competent red zone offense where it's been hit or miss all year. They had a three-game stretch where they went perfect a couple weeks ago. They've been up and down the last couple weeks. Can this offense sustain drives and finish in the end zone? And to cap off the last thing you said with the Giants needing turnovers, can the Eagles stop turning the ball over and Jalen Hurts stop turning the ball over your quarterback? He accounts for such high EPA every single play, so when he turns it over, it's going to have such a higher impact. Jalen, please, please, please protect the football, finish in the end zone. Even with a banged-up offensive line, you're going to have to wait, find a way to get some push and create a good pocket because the Eagles – When they run successfully, and I'm sure this is the same every other team, they create a nice little pocket. They dent the defensive line. The back isn't getting touched for two to three yards. They did that last week successfully. Can they get back to that? And without Dexter Lawrence, that could be a pivotal matchup. But I think we've said a lot about these teams. I think your followers over at Locked on Giants know exactly where they are at this point in the season. And We've been venting a lot over at Lockdown Eagles these last couple of weeks. It's been free therapy for, for Lou and myself. But you know where to find us each and every day, five days a week, sometimes more, at Lockdown Giants and Lockdown Eagles. And also the 24-7 streaming channel that we have over at Lockdown Sports today. But Patricia, it was excellent to see you once again. It's good to talk about Eagles and Giants and not Eagles Cowboys, of course, but have an excellent Christmas. I appreciate you joining us, and we're going to see you in a couple of weeks. Yes, we will. And you have a very Merry Christmas as well. And also to your, uh, your, your viewers and listeners, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. Um, remember, it's all about, you know, the spirit of the season. And whoever wins on, on Monday, you know, it is what it is. It's just a football game. So. Yep. Yeah. Let's just be nice to each other and enjoy some some good old American. And don't great do Santa football. Claus, please. Oh, that was 1966, Patricia. That was so long ago. <laughs> I, I, no, had, I had to. I I'm know. sorry. I had to. Oh, it happens. Well, you could check out Patricia on Twitter at Patricia underscore tra- Traina. You could follow myself at GC24 underscore football. Catch us both at our respective shows, Locked On Eagles, Locked On Giants. Make sure you rate, subscribe, interact with us. We are always talking football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, each and every day. Until next time, signing off.